Services are an integral component for almost every Android application, but the functionality they provide comes with a drain on battery and system resources. And if you're not paying attention, they can uh, get a little greedy with that too. My name is Cole McCandless, and using services in the most efficient way possible means killing them off the right way and sometimes not even using them. Uh, remember, services are how an application indicates to the operating system that it needs to perform a longer running operation outside of normal activity UI flow. Uh, basically, you can do work and don't have to wait for input events to do it, which is all great, but there's a few things you need to be aware of. Firstly, that from a system level, services aren't free. Uh, creating, scheduling, running, and even destroying services cost time and memory. Secondly, services run on the UI thread of your application, which is trying to update the screen every 16 milliseconds or so. This means if you're doing a bunch of work in a service, you can easily miss that 16 millisecond window and end up dropping a frame. Now, let me be very clear about this. In 90% of the cases, the best way to avoid these issues is to not use a service. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of situations where services are being used when they don't need to be. Uh, for example, using a service to listen and respond to events is way overkill. Uh, APIs like Broadcast Receiver can still respond fine to events even when your app is running in the background. This goes double for spinning up a service just to pull a server for data. Again, bad idea. You should be leveraging Google Cloud Messaging instead to allow the server to push updates to you, which you can still receive in your app directly without needing a service running. And if you know that your work is going to be happening in the background, then it doesn't make sense to bother the framework to be scheduling services for you. Instead, try using an actual threading setup like uh, intent services or handler threads or async task loaders, uh, all of which will get you the same result but with less scheduling overhead on the system and actually get your things off the UI thread, which is a bonus as well. Basically, there's lots of options provided by the framework to do various types of asynchronous work without needing to resort to the overhead that services demand. So if you can, try to leverage one of those solutions first. But if you've exhausted all of those options and you still find that a service is the only way to solve the problem, then you need to adhere to the one primary rule of services. Do not let services live longer than they are needed. Uh, you gotta remember, there's two distinct types of services with two distinct ways to terminate them. See, started services stay alive until they are explicitly stopped with a stop self or stop service call or uh, your app ends. Until then, the service just sits around waiting to process things and eating up resources. Now a bound service, on the other hand, stays around and consumes system resources until all of its clients unbind from it by calling unbind service or your app ends. Now mixing these two services is useful, but it's a common source of errors. Uh, for example, calling start service to create your service and then calling bind service on it for IPC communication. Uh, the problem here is that even when the client calls unbind service, it won't terminate yet because it's waiting around for a stop service to be called. The gist is this, you must get your pairing of start, stop, bind, and unbind right before this service will actually terminate. And Basically, that's the trick with services. Avoid them if you can, and if you are using them, make sure that you're not letting them ramble off into the weeds for longer than they should be. And if you have a suspicion that your services might be doing that, SysTrace is a great visual tool to help you see where your system time is going and what apps are responsible for it. And that's what Android performance patterns are all about. Making sure you're doing the right things at the right times so that you don't waste resources or perf cycles. Which is why you should check out the rest of the Android performance patterns content. And don't forget to join our Google Plus community for tips from other great developers. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters.